Hello, today we'll be looking at the relationship between force and motion, specifically how forces cause acceleration. So we're going to be talking about how unbalanced forces, that is those who, which don't cancel out, cause changes in the motion of an object. Now the changes in the motion can be either a change in speed, or a change in direction, or a change in both speed and direction. Now whenever any of those three things happen, we say that the velocity has changed because the velocity includes the speed and includes the direction and therefore the object is accelerating. Okay, so the unbalanced forces is the cause of an acceleration. So the question remains, if you apply the same force to different objects, will those different objects accelerate at the same rate? Will they all accelerate at the same rate if you apply the same force? So in order to answer that question, let's have a look at this slide. Here are two dinosaurs on skateboards, and the question is, will they accelerate at the same rate, or will they accelerate at different rates? And in order to answer that question, we need to think about the mass of the objects. This top um, dinosaur has a much, much larger mass than this lower dinosaur. So if they were accelerated, if they were pulled by a force F uh, towards the right in that direction, obviously, intuitively, the... Um, the smaller one would accelerate at a greater rate because it has a lighter mass. And that's true. And if we formalize that, we can see this little derivation here. Because the acceleration is going to be proportional to the net force. So if you apply double the force, you're going to double the acceleration. But it's also inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So if you double the mass with the same force, you're going to halve the rate of acceleration. It's going to go down by the same factor as the mass goes up. It's inversely proportional. And the acceleration will also be in the same direction as the net force. So if you've got more than one force acting, you have to work out the net force before you can work out what the acceleration is going to be. So mathematically then, the acceleration is proportional to the net force. It's inversely pro proportional to one oh sorry, it's inversely proportional to the mass or proportional to one over the mass. And you can combine these two proportionalities to get this expression here. The acceleration is proportional to the net force divided by the mass. Now that's good and that's um, a very important relationship, but we like dealing with equations. So the question is how do we turn that into an equation? Well to turn any equation, any proportionality into an equation we need a, what's called a constant of proportionality. So effectively A would be equal to a constant times the net force over the mass. All right, so this constant is something that we can use to turn that proportionality into an equation. A constant can just be um, a number, um, but it's a very special number, which is 1. And if the constant is 1, then it disappears from our algebra, and we just get that expression as an equation. So in order to turn this proportionality, f net is proportional to ma, into f net equals ma, we need to include a constant which is equal to 1. And the way we do that is we define the newton as the unit of force. And when we define the newton as a unit of force, this equation becomes um, has a constant of 1 and therefore becomes f net equals ma. So the newton, 1 newton, is defined as the force applied when a mass of one kilogram accelerates at a rate of one meters per second squared. So if you have a kilogram mass and you accelerate it at a rate of one meter per second squared, you will by definition be using a force of one newton to do that. All right, so mathematically speaking, one newton is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared. So this is our F and this is our M and this is our A. All right, so F equals ma when 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram times 1 meter per second squared. So by defining the newton, we can turn that proportionality into an equation with a constant of 1. Okay, so that's the theory behind it. And let's have a look at some um, examples where we're, we're using this equation to solve problems. Okay, so here's our first example. Um, here's our... Uh, our T-Rex on a skateboard and he's being pulled by this rope here which is tied around his ankle, oddly enough, um, and that's giving him a thrust T which we're going to say is equal to 500 newtons. So the thrust force from the rope is equal to 500 newtons. Okay, now let's say that the T-Rex has a mass of 500 kilograms. 
All right, and this rope is accelerating him in, him in this direction, uh, and that acceleration is at a rate of 0.2 meters per second squared. So quite a, uh, a slow rate of acceleration. And what we want to know is what the frictional force F is. So this is our unknown quantity that we're going to try and find out. All right, so we're going to use the equation F net equals MA. All right, now the first thing we have to do is realize that F net, the net force, is also equal to the thrust force minus the frictional force F. All right, so T minus F is equal to F net. So we can also then set T minus F to be equal to MA. All right, so T minus F equals MA, and that's the position we need to get to before we can move forward. So if we want to find F, we can just rearrange this equation and we get that the frictional force is equal to uh, the thrust force minus the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so F equals T minus MA. And then it's just a matter of plugging in numbers. So the thrust force we know, which is 500 newtons, minus the mass, which is 500 kilograms, times the acceleration, which is 0 0.2 meters per second squared. 500 times 0 0.2 is 100. 500 minus 100 is 400. Oops, 400 newtons. Okay, so the frictional force F is 400 newtons, retarding the acceleration of um, of the dinosaur on the skateboard. Okay, so that's a reasonably simple example, but the process is. Let's just highlight this in another color before we move on. We need to understand that the net force is equal to the difference in the forces and then we need to set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. Once we've got that expression there uh, we can move forward quite easily. It's just a simple matter of rearranging and substituting numbers. Alright so here's another example, a vertical example. We've got the uh, Montgolfier balloon there which is um, being accelerated upwards by a lift force L but also, there's a downward force, which is its weight. Now, weight, and it's quite handy here to break that down into mass times gravity. So, weight equals mg. So, we're going to use mg um, as an expression for the weight of the uh, balloon or any object. L is the lift. And what we want to know is, what is the lift force when the balloon, which has a mass of 200 kilograms, is accelerated upwards at a rate of one meter per second squared. Okay, so the acceleration is in the upward direction. The mass is 200 kilograms. We're not giving out any of these for either of these forces, but we're going to work them out. And the one we want is the lift. What is the lift? Okay, so we do the same thing. We write down that F equals MA. We just redo that equals sign because that's blurred together. F equals MA. Um, but it's the net force that we're interested in. And the net force is L minus W or L minus MG. So L minus MG is equal to MA. All right, and that's the key step that we need to get. So once we've done that, we can rearrange. We want to find L. So L is equal to MA plus MG. Putting that to the other side. Um, and if you want to, whoops, that's actually my fault that time. If you want to, you can actually factorize this thing for m. So that gives you L is equal to m times a plus g. So what we're effectively doing is adding the accelerations together in this case. So now we just need to substitute some numbers. So oh, my pen has disappeared. So we have that the lift force is equal to m which is 200 kilograms so 200 multiplied by the upward acceleration 1 uh, plus gravity now technically gravity acts downwards so you might think it's minus 9.81 but the minus sign has already been taken into account up here because technically the net force is the sum of the forces but because this one's acting in the opposite direction to this one I've included the minus sign there 
and that denotes the sine of the, of the force due to gravity. So that's already been taken into account. So actually we can just add that on to G. Um, now G is 9.81, but to make the maths easier, I'm going to use one significant figure and call it 10. So the lift force is equal to 200 times 11, which is 2,200 newtons. Okay, so again, the key point is realizing what the sum, or in, in this case, the difference of the forces is, the net force, setting that equal to MA, net force equals MA, rearranging, and then substituting numbers. Now, they do get a bit more complex. Sometimes you have um, angles involved. So let's say that something is accelerating down the slope, and we have a weight coming down vertically this way. Oops, that's not very vertical. Mg, and then you have a component of that weight acting down that slope at an angle, let's say theta. But we're going to talk about those in a different video because those are a little bit more complicated. That's almost it. One more thing. Um, F equals ma assumes that the object undergoing this force has a constant mass. Now that's fine for everyday objects, and for 99% of the problems that we encounter in, in nature, we can use that equation. But when Einstein came along and developed his theory of relativity, he realized that things don't have constant mass when things start moving very, very quickly. And when I say quickly, we're talking about close to the uh, universal speed limit, which is the speed of light. As objects approach the speed of light, their mass starts to increase, and it increases very rapidly the closer they get to the speed of light. So when things are traveling what we call relativistically, or very, very fast indeed, F equals MA does not apply because this mass isn't constant and therefore the acceleration won't be proportional to the force. And this has been proven in experiments like the Large Hadron Collider. You can put more and more energy, more and more force on these, on these particles as, as you're speeding them up and it won't turn into extra acceleration. It won't speed them up. What happens is that the mass starts to increase rather than the acceleration. So F equals MA is not valid at speeds like that. But in 99% of cases, and certainly the ones that you're going to encounter in the exam. It's a good equation, and now we know how to use it.